Hi everyone. Um, I wanted to take a look at the 60-year cycle, um, which uh, W.D. Gann was uh, apparently very interested in, um, and um, looking at it using timing solution and the S&P 500 index with data going back about 1950 or so, uh, daily data. Um, and I'm starting out by uh, creating a 60-year cycle um, by clicking this button here, clicking Other in the Astronomy Composite module, and typing in 60 and choosing Years. Okay, and so. And I wanted to see uh, how this cycle uh, and the S&P 500 were related um, as far back as the data I have um, uh, downloaded from a timing solution uh, using the download button up here. So I, I'm going to click no on that. Um, so anyway, to narrate this, I found an article at Forbes on the history of U.S. bear markets, 57 to 22. Um, so it's kind of interesting. Um, let's see. And here's a list um, of various bear markets. So um, the first one uh, on my available data is the bear market of 57, 56.7, uh, the Eisenhower recession. And there was a decline of 22%. Um, and let's see here. So here we have this decline in, in through uh, mid-57 all the way to a bottom uh, by the, the start of 58. And the curve tracks it perfectly. By the way, I've got the settings to 100% smooth ARB. Oscillator is normal. Last cycle weight is 100. Um, and we're having, uh, it happens to be that in choosing the manual cycle of 60 years that Lilith came up, which is kind of interesting, uh, as a 100-day cycle. But that got overridden um, in order to become a 60-year cycle. So anyway, okay, so just going right along, let's just follow the list here and see how this um, 60 day cycle predicted every single bear market. Um, so here we have a 6870 with inflation and Vietnam War. And let's see, it declined 36%. Take a look again. Oh, by the way, they didn't mention this drop here, which is called the Kennedy slide. Uh, there was a big run-up in the in 1961, and people got pretty nervous by the beginning of 62, and, and dropped down in here. Um, okay, so the Forbes obviously they're just hitting the the biggest ones, but um, this 60-year cycle set to normal um, is tracking the movement of the S&P um, pretty, pretty well. Um, so here's the 6970 Vietnam Great Recession. Okay, and next up would be the Arab oil embargo, uh, which I remember well. So I was in college during this, this event here. And here we have the 74, 73 through 5 Arab oil embargo, a huge decline. Um, so um, it's uncanny how well this 60 year cycle is tracking. Of course, I'm not using LBC because when I do that, let's say um, I put this in 73, because of the length of the cycle and the amount of data I have. Um, it's, it's not working very well here. But as I get more and more data behind me, this will get more and more accurate, and also I could use various uh, smooth herb amounts uh, playing with some of these settings in order to get an accurate LBC. But for now, uh, I just need to uh, work with non-LBC. 
Hmm. There we go. So um, that's pretty much it. We've got recession after recession and then growth spurts. Um, under what Forbes has to say about this one. Let's see. So that was the oil shock. We had an 8082 double dip recession. Um, we had really high inflation back then. Inflation reached 15% uh, interest rates at 19%. This was when we bought our first house in 1980, and I remember those very high interest rates. It's been the history of my home ownership ever since of refinancing as rates keep coming down and down and down. Um, so 1987, Black Monday, remember that was more of a flash crash, but um, let's take a look at the chart. See, that was a sudden drop off here. Um, because of the speed of this and the length of this cycle, they don't quite line up, but you get the idea. If you were looking um, in 87 at this curve playing out over the next year or two, it pretty well foretold what was to happen. Um, which is a comment I made on the group recently also, uh, that uh, rather than, well, it's, what comes first, the cycle or the economic mood? Is it the chicken or the egg? And it's kind of an unanswerable question, uh, but cycles are here and cycles prevail. And no matter what the news cycle says of why it happened, the fact is that it happens according to the cyclical 60-year cycle. Okay. Um, let's see what else is coming up here. Okay, the 1990 Gulf War, uh, three month, that's what that was. And then the dot com bubble, but we probably have something. But here's the Gulf War. Um, and this just was a slowdown through here, but not really a, a little sideways motion. And here we come to the dot-com bubble. So this is a little bit early, but we get the idea. Hit the bottom. As has been discussed recently, bottoms are more accurate. Thank you, Larry. Um, and so it, it's telling a top was happening, but people kind of kept riding it along. And But the bottom is pretty well defined here. So... 2008 financial crisis and bam it picks out that bottom pretty pretty accurately um, so back to Forbes let's just go see what's happening here global financial a COVID-19 pandemic of 2020 and then 22 post pandemic supply chain crisis Okay, so long bear run here. I mean, sorry, bullish run. And here we have a top, but this run did was not accurately. So there, you know, it. Okay, this one. So that that one did not work out so well. Um, there may be reasons for that, but here's a nice drop into the the COVID problem, and right here, the latest one, uh, supply chain problems coming out of post COVID, so on and so forth. Um, and, and then the rise up into the current conditions. Okay, notice how um, the curve is working better now that I have all this data behind me. And uh, it looks things look bullish or positive right through the rest of this year. Uh, so 
Um, after that, it looks like watch out, but uh, time will tell. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching.